Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas, and in this mini tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get in and out of a car like in a Grand Theft Auto game. So, all I've done is I've set up a quick scene uh, with a couple of textures, a couple of cubes, just to give it a bit more of a city look. Um, I've imported a first person controller and a cart, which are the standard assets of Unity. And you, if you don't have that, you can right click in your assets box, go to import package, choose characters and vehicles. If you don't have them there, you can head over to the Unity 3D website and download them for free there. So all I've done with the car is I've just attached a blue material on there, just to give it a bit of colour and definition. So I am using a first person controller. You can use a third person controller, it makes no difference. This tutorial will accommodate for both. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to have two scripts in this tutorial. One is going to let us get in the car. The second is going to be a reverse engineered script to let us get out the car. The first thing we're going to need to do is if you go to edit and go to project settings and input, you need to make sure you have uh, an action key. This is usually the E key on a keyboard, so this is to do whatever. If you already have it set up there, just remember what you've named it. If you don't have it, just change your size to one plus whatever this currently says. So in this case, change it to 19, hit enter and it will duplicate the last one at the bottom. What you want to do, or what I'm going to do if you want to follow the exact same, is call it action, and the positive button is going to be the E key on your keyboard. Next thing we're going to do is we need to add a trigger to our vehicle. So game object, 3D object, cube, and drag and drop onto your car. Right click, uh, rename, and let's call this car trigger and let's drag it into a position which seems about reasonable on our car so about there i'm going to extend it to about 1.3 make it a little bit bigger just so as we have a bit of space to get into our car and then i'm going to tick is trigger next thing we need to drag and drop our main camera onto the car itself and what you need to do then is position your camera just right so as you have a decent view of your vehicle however you want it to appear. So in this case for me I've put it behind the car about there and you can see in the camera preview down here that's what it looked like when we press play. So the next thing we need to do is we need to disable that main camera. Reason for that is we currently start off with our controller and we only want the camera to be visible for them. Next thing we need to do is we need to go game object, create empty, and we're gonna call this one, oops, sorry, we're gonna call this one exit trigger. And we're also going to disable that one right there. Last thing we need to do before we start writing scripts is head to our car and disable car controller and car user control. These will be something we activate when we get into our car. So right click, create, and I'm gonna do this in JavaScript. The reason I'm doing this in JavaScript is because the script is so simple. There's, there's no need to go into complexity with it in C Sharp. If you wanna do it in C Sharp, the um, lines of code are almost exactly the same. If you, if you are doing this in C Sharp, then I'm assuming that you already have experience with C Sharp and will know how to state variables correctly as JavaScript C Sharp is different. So I'm gonna call this one enter car. And I'm gonna open it up in mono develop. And as I always say in every other tutorial I've got, if you've got Visual Studio, it makes no difference. The lines of code are gonna be exactly the same. So we're gonna set in this first one, um, five variables. The first one we're gonna set is car cam. So we need to do var car cam and that is going to be of type game object next one we need to state is going to be the player so var the player and that is also going to be game object next thing we need to do there is going to be the exit trigger which is the game object we created earlier right there so var exit trigger and that is going to be game object next thing we need to do now is going to be the car itself so var the car that is also going to be a game object now the reason we have to state the car here is because we need to turn off 
the uh, components that we've, um, well, we need to turn them on and then turn them off of the car controlling system. The last variable we need is just going to be an integer to um, note whether we are inside the area to get into our car or not. I'm just going to call this one uh, something real simple. Let's call this trigger check. And that's going to be int. So the first thing we need to do is an on trigger enter function. So function on trigger enter. And in brackets, I'm going to put call and collider as I do standard with everything I do. I like to keep everything standardized simply because it helps, you know, it's good practice to be a programmer, really, as long as you keep everything consistent. So in here, all we need to do is put trigger check equals one, semicolon and close. Next, we need to do the inverse of that. So on trigger exit. So function on trigger exit and then in brackets call and collider looking good that's fine so as you probably guessed at this point it's going to be trigger check is equal to zero semicolon and close curly bracket last thing we need to do is a function update now the purpose of this function update is to run constantly and to do two checks so the first check is going to be to check whether the trigger check is one and then second is going to be to tell whether we're pressing the E button. So function, update, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And it's going to be if trigger check is equal to one, open curly bracket. Remember that's a double equal sign right there. And then if, and then open bracket, input dot get button down. And we need to check we are pressing the action button. So action, and then in there, open curly bracket. And then we need to perform the actions that we want to happen. So in this case, first off, we need the car camera. So car cam dot set active, and that's going to be true. Clo um, sorry, semicolon, I should say. Next thing, we need the player to turn off. So player dot set active. Oops. Not surat active, set active, and that is false. Next thing we need to do is we need to turn on our two uh, components. So it's going to be the car.getComponent, and in brackets, we need to double check what they're called. So if you go back to Unity, click on car, and it's car controller and car user control with no spaces. And you don't need to put in that script at the end. So it's car controller, car user control. So car controller dot enabled equals true. And then the car dot get component in brackets, car user control dot enabled equals true, semicolon. Last thing we need to do is we need to set our exit trigger as being active because this is the game object that will contain the script which allows us to exit the vehicle. So exit trigger dot set active true. And let's close the two if statements and then close our function and save. So let's head back to Unity. Hopefully we shouldn't have any errors there. So having a quick think. And yeah, that looks fine. That's come back normal. So next thing we need to do is we need to create a script to get out the car. So right click, create another script, and let's call it exit car. So this one um, will only need one single function on because we don't need to check whether we're in the car or not because this object that it's attached to will only be active when we're in the car. So we need five variables again, slightly different on this one. First four are going to be pretty much the same. So var the uh, fact. No, we'll start with car cam, and that's going to be game object. Next, it's going to be the player. That's also going to be game object. Next is going to be the uh, exit trigger. Game object. Uh, next is going to be the car itself. So var 
the car game object and lastly we need to set a place where our player can get out the car rather than just randomly appearing anywhere or just appearing where we left them to begin with so var exit place that's also going to be game object the reason we're having it as a game object is because the trigger for the car which we get in at can also be the exit trigger so wherever that is we also exit at the same place so we're going to use a function update so we need it to run constantly so when we're in the car it's always checking if we're going to press the action key the e key so if input dot get button down in brackets and quote action and do the following and let's reverse it all so firstly we need to put the player on the player dot set active in brackets true so we need to set where the player is actually going to be active at so we need to do the player dot transform dot position is equal to exit place dot transform dot position so it puts us in the exact position of where the trigger is next thing let's turn the car camera off so car cam dot set active false Next thing we need to do is set the two components active, um, sorry, inactive again. So it's going to be the car dot uh, get component in brackets. It was car user. Oops, I need to put quotes there. Car user control dot enabled equals false, and the car dot get component. And in brackets, it was car controller dot enabled equals false. The last thing we need to do is we need to disable the object that this script is all attached to. So this has to be the last line of code in this function. So it will be exit trigger dot set active in brackets false. And then let's close the if statement and close the function and save the script so now we have our script written we just need to oh I've mistyped exit place there um where have I put it it's exit there it is put an s instead of a t so let's head back to unity uh just make sure we don't have any errors and we don't <clears throat> So we need to attach our scripts to the correct objects and set all our variables. So firstly, let's put our enter car on our car trigger. And let's put car cam on their main camera. The player is next to go on. Exit trigger is going to be the exit trigger object. And the car, obviously the car. Next, we need to put exit car on the exit trigger. Let's try that again. There we go, exit trigger. Oops, done it twice, sorry. Uh, so car cam, uh, main camera, the player, exit trigger, which is this object it's attached to, the car, and obviously car trigger is going to be our exit place. So let's save. And last thing I'm going to do is this car trigger, I'm going to turn off the mesh render. And make sure you that it's very important you have that ticked as trigger, otherwise this whole thing will not work. So let's press play and let's check everything out. So as it stands now, we can move our player around and the car won't move. So we can walk up to our car, press the E key, and in we get into the car. And let's drive our car around. No problem at all. So let's say we want to get out of our car right here. Let's press our E key and out we get. So let's get back in and off we go again. So we can drive around, stop here, E key to get out.
And as you can see, the car doesn't move, but we move. So the beauty about this is once you've got this mechanism all set up, you can, for example, take your car, duplicate, bring it over here, maybe. And I don't know, let's give it a kind of a red color, maybe. So let's put red material on it, just so we have a bit of difference in the first car and the second car. So logically, over here, this car trigger will now actually act differently. So you can see this main camera only reflects the duplicated car over here. And the same will apply for the rest, except for the first person controller, which will always reference here because it's not a child. So if all goes well, we should now be able to have two cars, neither one of them move. We get into the first car and only that car moves. So like I say, with this mechanism, once you have it set up, just once you can duplicate any car and it will work the exact same way every time. So just to double check, let's get into this car and let's drive away. And there we go. And that is how, oops, one thing just noticed there, that did fail. So let's make sure we have that right. So what's happened there is the exit trigger as attached to there. So what we probably are better off doing is always attaching our exit trigger to our car. So that is the fatal flaw that we've had right there. So it's a good job we tested. So now if we duplicate again and drag our car out, put it over here. And just to differentiate, I'm going to drag the blue material to that one just as we have a difference. Press play again. And let's quickly check that this does work, it should do. So we're in our car, driving, that's fine. And we get out the red one, no problem. So let's head to the blue one, into the blue one. That's fine, and now hopefully, we should be able to get out the blue one. And we do. So that's how you can get in and out of a car similar to Grand Theft Auto. Third person, first person, it still works the same. Thank you very much for watching.